Hi guys, I'm Cody Harris with Weapon Genetics and this is the Sega conversion video. So we've been getting a lot of phone calls from people asking about Sega conversions and there seems to be some confusion. Some people want front end conversions, some people want rear end conversions, but nobody seems to have a full understanding of what really goes into it. So let's say you've got a gun like one of these, an imported Sega in its imported configuration, which there's nothing wrong with that gun. I've got a close friend who has killed a ton of deer with an AK just like one of these three. Um, these guns came in in 7.6239, 5.45x39, and 2.23. So, but let's say you've got one of these, and you want it to look like one of these. So this particular gun has a rear-end conversion, a magwell conversion, and a front-end conversion. So what that entails on the rear-end, there's different kinds of conversions. Some people want these guns converted to a triangle folder or a side folder like this one. What that entails is us cutting the back of the receiver, drilling it for this latch, and re-riveting in a new trunnion. Now, depending on the quality of the parts that you get, these conversions can be problematic. Um, some of these kits are made in Russia, some of them are made in Bulgaria, some are made in Taiwan, some are here made here in the US. And depending on the quality of the parts you get, it can make the conversion easy or hard. We also have to cut the front of the gun for a latch. And we also have to drill through the receiver and through the trunnion for the uh, retaining pin for that latch. But nevertheless, when you're done with the gun, you get a pretty sweet side folding gun. Now the guns come factory with a standard rifle trunnion, which in my opinion is great because there's a lot of options out there. So if you don't want to change out the rear trunnion, you don't have to. Um, however, you're still gonna be left with the holes for your trigger pins that were originally in the rear. So we weld those holes up. And of course, anytime you're doing any welding, you're gonna to want to recoat the gun. So again, even with just a simple rear end conversion, you're still gonna to have to Cerakote that gun. And with our cost on Cerakote, it's pretty affordable. This particular gun, we also uh, welded up the old selector markings and re-laser engraved them with the correct Russian markings. We also converted this gun, even though this is a 5.56 gun, we milled out the front trunnion so that you can take a 5.45 mag. Pretty cool on that. Now towards the front of the gun, some people will have us do this gun to a traditional conversion. But we've got a lot of people who are having us do conversions more like this. This particular gun, we added an adjustable gas block by Definitive Arms. We cut and threaded the barrel, did a pin and weld for a suppressor, and to bring this barrel up to a full length of 14, or a full 16 inch length barrel, so he doesn't have to do a tack stamp. Uh, we sear coated this one over color and added a bunch of really, really cool Zenitco furniture. Uh, we got a rifle dynamics rear end on it, and of course this one's got an ALD trigger. So that's another thing, when you're doing a Sega conversion, you also are gonna need a new trigger. If you're getting a new trigger, you might as well get something good like an ALG. Um, another thing with these guns, and I'll show you this, your original furniture on these guns is not drilled and pinned like on a typical AK. They're actually pressed. This is a standard front sight for a Sega. They're actually pressed into the barrel. So we have to mill that out to press these off. And obviously we can weld those holes back up and then re-drill them. It's actually got the indicating holes for pins. So we can reuse these parts, but we prefer not to. Um, a better option is to go is to buy correct parts that have the bayonet lugs on them or to do something like an adjustable gas block like on this gun. Uh, this gun is awesome. This is a go to war gun for sure. Um, so that's, oh, and one more thing. Sorry, I forgot about this. Handguard retainer. If you look back at a standard import Sega, we have this long gas tube and there's no handguard retainer in there. So you'll need a new gas tube as well as a handguard retainer. And when we do these guns, we hand fit our handguard retainers to the handguard that's supplied with the gun, whether that be as a Nitco or a standard polymer or wood handguard or whatever it may be. So when you're thinking about doing your Sega conversions, think about what all you want to do. Do you want to do a complete rear end conversion? Like this gun, we didn't have to. He used a, an adapter from Rival Dynamics, so we didn't have to change out that rear trunnion. Versus on this one, we had to do a lot of custom work, custom hand fitting and filing to make it work. So do you want a rear end conversion? Do you want your selector markings done? Do you want the handguard retainer? Do you want a traditional sight block and gas block? Or do you want something custom, more like this guy with an adjustable gas block? Do you want your barrel threaded or do you want to use the threads that are on the front sight post? So there's a, a few things to think about that goes into doing a Sega conversion. So I hope you guys, I hope this clears up some stuff. There's a lot of other really, really super clone correct stuff you can get into like the exact right rear sight and muzzle device and trigger and paint. We used to offer the uh, Russian paint. We're having a hard time getting it now. So we've gone back to mostly just Cerakote, which is awesome to begin with. So if you guys are looking at doing a uh, Sega conversion, 
Check out Weapon Genetics. We can do just about anything from a custom gun like this one to a very traditional, what I would consider absolute clone correct gun. Uh, check us out online, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And hopefully you guys have got something from this video.